two-step equations. A solution for an equation is a variable, a value for a variable that makes the equation true. And so we've already been solving linear equations by doing those one-step problems. And so here we take a look at two-step problems. To solve a two-step equation, we use a rule for addition and subtraction to isolate the variables. Now, when you do the addition and subtraction first, uh, you may still have a multiplication or division equation. So, as our second step, we will use multiplication and division to clear out any more uh, numbers away from the variable so that the variable can be isolated. So, basically, addition and subtraction to, to solve equations we're going to do the addition and subtraction first to isolate the variable and then after that we do the multiplication division for example we have a 4y plus 9 equals 41 and this is a two-step equation it has a multiplication and an addition involved with a y our variable so to solve for this, our first step is to get rid of the 9, the addition portion of things, by subtracting a 9 from both sides. And so when we do that, we have a 4y left on one side, and then the 41 minus 9 equals 32 left on the other side. So now our equation becomes a multiplication equation, and to solve for that, we would divide by 4 on both sides and then we get our solution. Now again, this is our potential solution. We want to plug this back into the original equation to make sure that we do have the correct equation, uh, the correct solution. And when we plug the 8 in for the y, we see that we get 41 equals 41. So 8 equals y was our correct solution. In the second example, we have x divided by 9 minus 5 equals to 3. Uh, again, we're going to deal with a 5 first. And so we would, uh, because this is a subtraction equation, we would add 5 to both sides. When we add 5 to both sides, our left-hand side will just become x divided by 9. Our, our right-hand side would be 3 plus 5 is 8. To solve for x, we would multiply by 9 on both sides now. And so the 9's cancel on the left-hand side, leaving us with just x. And then 8 times 9 is 72. Our potential solution is 72. We put that back in for x into the original equation. And we work this out to see that we actually get a true statement in the end. We do, so our solution x equals 72 was correct. Here we have 8 minus 3x equals 17. To solve for this, uh, we see that the 8 is the one without the variable, and technically there is an addition happening here. And so to get rid of that 8, we would subtract 8 from both sides. So 8 minus 8 and 17 minus 8. And on the left-hand side, we would get a negative 3x. 17 minus 8 is equal to 9. And so when we uh, solve, continue to solve for x, we will divide by negative 3 on both sides. And we see a positive 9 divided by a negative 3 on the right-hand side. That becomes negative 3. To check our answer, we'll put this back into the original equation. Uh, our potential solution of x equals to negative 3. And then simplify that out. We see 17 equals 17, so that was our correct answer. x is equal to negative 3. As our final example, we take a, an online clothing store charges a flat shipping rate of 6 plus uh, $1.75 for each item. How many items did Betsy ship if her shipping costs were $20? So we set up an equation of our shipping cost and we are going to let our variable be the number of items that we've got. So uh, on one side we have $1.75 times X plus the flat shipping rate of 6 bucks. 
and that's going to equal to her total shipping cost which is 20. We have a an equation with a multiplication and an addition so we deal with addition first. We subtract the 6 from both sides. Uh, 20 minus 6 is 14 and now we have a multiplication equation. We'll solve for that by dividing by 1.75 from both sides and we see x is equal to 8. We check our solution by putting 8 in for x and after working that out we get 20 equals 20 which means our original solution of x equals 8 must have been correct. And that is how many items Betsy had shipped if her shipping cost ended up costing $20.